All right, guys, let's go over some basics for ladder diagrams. A lot of stuff you guys are doing in shop, you're using this 8-pin relay. And in order to, to energize this guy, you got to provide current to pins 2 and 7. So we'll just put those numbers over here. 2 and 7 are the coil. When you energize that coil, it's going to change the state of the contacts that are above. Now, there are two distinct sets of contacts there. So I can put a line in between those guys. And... These contacts here on this side have no electrical contact or will not be touching um, the other contacts on the other side. So you can put different voltages on them. You can have them feeding different parts of your circuit. Uh, unless you put a jumper between them, they're never going to touch each other. Now each of those circuits has a common connection. So we'll just arbitrarily say this is our A part. And so on this A portion of the relay. Number one is the common. So we'll say common A. It's common to this guy right here. If we follow this line right here, you can see that it is touching this contact. So that's our normally closed for that set. So the normally closed for A will be pin number four. And then you can see here that number three when the relay changes state, then that common is going to move over and touch three. So that is our normally open on A. So we have two and seven for the coil. One is the common, and it's common to both four and three. Four is the normally closed, and three is the normally open. The other common is number eight. Okay, so we'll just put that here, common, easy now. So we'll just uh, say that that's our B part of the, the relay, right? So common, and that guy goes up and it's common to pin number five. And if you're taking a look at pin number five, it looks the same as pin number four in that it is the normally closed contact. Leaving us with the last contact here, number six, and number six, is the normally open, and I'm on cruise control here, sorry guys, the normally open for that second part of the circuit. So now we've got an 8-pin relay, and we're going to use that to create a number of different uh, components within our ladder diagram. So, and it's really amazing that there's, there's not really any decent uh, programs out there that I can see. There's a few that are not bad, but there's none that you can really simulate, so I'm going to draw out the, the diagrams is for me to pick and choose different components, uh, the video would take too long. So what we'll do is we'll start with two lines. All right, so there's our feed, there's our return for our ladder diagram. And say we just needed to turn something on. So say we had maybe a, a stop start station. Well, in order to feed that, we've got to come off this line and we'll drop in a normally closed push button coming over to a normally open push button and we'll have that guy feeding the relay. Okay, now that's feeding the coil of the relay and we said that the coil of the relay was 2 and 7 so we can label these guys 2 and contact 7 on the control relay. Easy now. Okay, now the way this is set up is that we have our stop and our start. So if you press the, the start push button here, then it would allow current to go over to the relay. And say we wanted to have a light turn on when the control relay was energized. Well, we have two options. We can either place a light in parallel with the control relay. And we know that in parallel, each of these components will have the same voltage. So the control relay will have, say, say our, we, our circuit's running off 120 volts. So the control relay gets 120 volts. And this pile light is also in parallel with it, so it's also going to get 120 volts. When you press this button, 
So we'll allow current to go to the control relay. We'll also go to the light. So the relay and the light will be energized at the same time. Alternatively, we could have taken, instead of going in parallel, we could have a line down here where we have a contact from that control relay and it goes to a light. So when the relay is energized, maybe we want to have a green light energized at that point. Okay, so if we press this button, it will energize the control relay. All of these contacts are drawn in their shelf state, meaning that if you pulled it off the shelf with no energy, no current to it, that's what the, set, the contact would actually look like. So it's a normally open contact. When you energize the control relay, this will change state to close, allowing current to go over to your green light. Now the contacts for those guys, maybe we'll just try this A portion of the, the relay. So the common there is number one. And for the normally open, we're going to make use of one and three. Okay, now the limitation on this is that we have to hold the, the push button. If we let go of the push button, then we block the current going from this line over to the control relay, which brings this back to its shelf state, which turns off the light. So now we need a holding contact. And a holding contact is just another contact that is in parallel with whatever you use to initiate that circuit. So we can place a contact here, right across our start push button. And since that comes before the second contact, maybe we'll change these guys over to here. So we'll have the common and our normally open right here. And we'll just label this guy saying that it's being controlled by the control relay. So now when we hit the push button, it's going to energize the control relay, close this contact, which maintains the circuit to the relay. So even though we let go of the start push button now, the control relay will be energized still. And we also have another normally open contact, right? We have this guy right here, the common and the normally open available to us. So for this guy, we can label it eight and six. Eight is the common and six is the normally open. Now at that point, we've kind of taken up both of the, the contacts there, right? Because we're making use of both of the commons. If we wanted to have a red light on when the relay was off, well, we're kind of stuck because we've already used the two contacts. One contact here to maintain the control relay on and another contact here to allow our green light to be on. But one of the rules is that as long as you're going from one terminal here to another terminal and you don't go through another component like a push button uh, or a contact, then essentially it's the exact same piece of wire. So if we needed to have a light on when the relay was off, we'll just make it red to show that the relay is off. We could do this. The reason why we can do this is because this contact right here and this guy right here have the exact same piece of wire going from here to here. You didn't go through any components. So that is essentially the same as wiring it to pin number eight. Okay, pin number eight has a normally open, but it also has a normally closed. Right? If we follow this, eight goes up to the normally closed and there's our normally open on six. So if we wanted to make use of a normally closed contact, well, we can do that. Right, we can go between 8 and 5. 8's the common. We're already bringing the wire into there. So we can share that with 6 and 5. The problem is, is that some people try to take 
a contact that is in a, another part of the circuit, like this one right here, where we have one and three. And they're saying, all right, well, I got the normally open there. Well, I might as well make use of the normally closed down here. I got one and I'll drop in four and that should work fine. But the problem is, is that at that point, if you follow from this contact that you wired to this bad boy over here, well, going from there to the other one, we end up going through the stop push button. So essentially what we've done by doing that is we've taken a jumper and gone like that because we're connecting those two points together. If we bring both of those wires to pin number one, then we've completely eliminated this stop push button. So just be careful when you're creating the ladder diagrams. Um, it's fine to, let me just go back here. It's fine to uh, use a number of different contacts but if you're going to use the normally open and the normally closed, then you've got to make sure that your common point right here does not have any components going from one point to another. It's got to essentially be the same piece of wire. Okay, the only thing we're missing here now is our, um, our numbers for each of the wires. So let's see if we can drop those guys in there. So if we say that this is line one and this is our neutral, well, we'll start with wire number one. And again, going from there to any of the other points, if we're not going through another component, then all of these guys are the same wire. Now, a lot of textbooks will do this. They'll put the two right here. It makes sense. With you're going through a component, you're supposed to increase to the, the next number. But then you get out in the field and you notice that all of the returns on a lot of circuits make use of two as the number for the return wire. And I've fallen into that trap being a donkey and taking off a wire here that's labeled number two and getting you know one of the machines working. But as soon as I remove that wire number two, the one machine I was working on was working fine, but I didn't notice that I had just taken the return for the other machine down the line. So I think I'm a hero, I'm fixing the first machine when in fact I have taken out the rest of the line and all the other controls have no return wire because I have now removed that number two wire. So. We'll start with a, we'll place our two right here as our return. One as our feeder here. And then we'll just incrementally increase. Right, all of these guys are wire number three. At that point, we're going to go through the start push button. So these guys are all wire number four. This guy is number four. Right, because they're all essentially the same piece of wire. Drop down here, this guy is wire number five. This guy's five. This bad boy is five. Ah, no, this guy's six, right? Because as soon as <clears throat> we go through a contact, then we've got to increase the number there, right? And we're done. We've got all of our components there, the start, the stop, the control relay contact, which corresponds to this bad boy right here. Two and seven are de denoting the coil. One and three are denoting our normally open. We haven't made use of four because we were placing the stop push button and we had no use for it. And then we've created a, a circuit where when the control relay turns on, it closes this contact, energizes the green light. And when we turn it off, then this goes closed at shelf state and turns on the red light. As soon as we energize this control relay, these two will change state. So the green will turn on and the red will turn off. Now at that point, if we needed to create you know, more to this circuit, um, then essentially we're stuck. 